Photogrammetry is a popular technique to create 3D scans of real-world objects by taking lots of pictures from all around it and then processing them with specialized software. In this tutorial I want to guide you step by step through the process from shooting images to the final 3D model. We are going to use free and open source software for the scanning and processing. This episode is sponsored by Rendero. Their service allows you to create photo scans even if your hardware is too weak or not even compatible with the software we are going to use. I'm going to explain all of this later on in the video. Even though Rendero paid me to make this tutorial, they didn't pay for my opinion. I can truly stand behind everything I say about their product. The very first step going into this project is to find an interesting object that you would like to scan. Avoid subjects with reflective or transparent surfaces since they won't lead to great results. Another thing to avoid is hard sunlight. You'll get better scans in the shadow or on overcast days with soft lighting. If you have a DSLR to take the images, this is great. If you do not, your smartphone should do the job as well. Take lots of photos from all around the object. Constantly change the perspective to give the photogrammetry software as much information as possible to work with. For this one I took around 150 images. You can download them with the link in the video description if you want to follow along without getting your hands dirty. You could go up to 500 or even more images depending on the level of detail you are looking for. But keep in mind that this will also increase processing time and RAM usage. Once the shooting is done we can get back inside and load the images to our computer. Meanwhile go to alicevision.org and download Meshroom. This is an open source project so you can get it for free. To properly run this software an Nvidia CUDA enabled GPU is required. But don't worry if you don't have this available. I have a solution ready for you. You can process your scans on a cloud computer from Rendero. They offer four different configurations with extremely powerful Nvidia Tesla T4 GPUs and lots of RAM which is essential for photogrammetry. For this project the basic setup is already fast enough. However if you want to make bigger scans with more images I recommend you to use more RAM otherwise you'll probably run into some issues down the line. Rendero provides up to 192GB of RAM in their turbo configuration which is extremely powerful. Their workstations are really easy and quick to set up and the connection is really smooth. You can learn more about their product in my car VFX tutorial that I recorded entirely on their virtual machine. And if you are still unsure whether this is an option for you, I recommend you to just give it a try. They offer a free trial version with $10 of credit to test it out. All the screen recordings you'll see in this video are done on one of their cloud computers. Photogrammetry is a process that takes a lot of time to calculate. Therefore optimization is essential. The images that I took have a resolution of 6000 by 4000 pixels and are around 15 megabytes big. From previous experiments I've concluded that it is more important to have lots of images than it is to have high resolutions. This is why I like to scale my images down which will speed up the calculations without losing much quality. An easy way to do this is to open up a video editing workspace in Blender and import all the shots as an image sequence. First I adjust the length of the timeline, then I bring the resolution down 50% to reduce the resolution. In the color management settings I make sure that the view transform is set to standard instead of filmic to avoid color changes. I want to use JPEG as the output format to compress the files even more. Then I set an output folder and press Ctrl F12 to render the animation and convert all the images. Now my file sizes went down from 15 megabytes 
to less than 2 MB per image, which should speed up Meshroom quite a bit. Depending on your hardware and the level of detail you need, you might want to use higher output settings or not compress them at all. Now it is finally time to open up Meshroom. Select all the images and drag and drop them into the workspace. The default settings are pretty good, however there is one thing I want to adjust. In the meshing node I bring down the number of points quite a bit. Again this will improve the performance without affecting the quality of the outcome too much. Then just save the file and press start. This process will now take quite some time. On my Rendero cloud computer this took me around 90 minutes to complete. I think processing photo scans on Rendero can make sense for everyone, even if your hardware is compatible. It will probably be faster and the best thing about it is that you can let it process in the background while continue working on other projects on your local machine. Once the scan is done, we can close Meshroom. We are going to preview the result in Blender. Go to File, Import, Wavefront.obj to bring it in. The result can be found in the Meshroom Cache folder under Texturing. It might take some time to import since it is a really heavy file. Most of the time the imports have weird orientations so I tried to fix this with rotating and moving it around from orthographic perspectives. Once it is placed in the center, I tab into edit mode and delete everything except the essential part of the scan. If you want to see the texture, simply switch to the material preview. I am also going to remove all the ground parts, so I am only left with the actual object. As you probably realized, this geometry is really heavy and hard to work with. I want to retopologize it to bring down the poly count and increase the usability of the object. To achieve this, I export this mesh as an OBJ file. Then I open another free software called Instant Meshes. There I import the OBJ file, set the target vertex count and let it solve. Then I solve the geometry and re-export the retopologized mesh. Make sure to use .obj at the end of the file name, otherwise it won't work. Back in Blender, import the new low poly mesh. Unfortunately, we lost our UV data and textures, so we have to reproject it. Let's first give it a new UV map. Tap into edit mode, select everything, Press U and choose Smart UV Project. You can also see that all the edges are marked sharp which leads to bad shading. To solve this, with everything selected go to the Edge menu and choose Clear Sharp. Now let's bake the texture. For this give the low poly object a new material and add an image texture node. Click on the plus to create a new texture. I set the resolution to 4K and disable the alpha channel. Make sure this image texture node is selected in the shader editor when baking to get correct results. Then tab into edit mode and use the shortcut Alt plus S to scale the mesh along the normals so that the two objects are not intersecting. Make sure that you are in vertex selection mode while doing this. We are going to reverse this later on but it is necessary to get a good bake. Back in object mode, select the high poly object first and shift click on the low poly one. Switch the render engine to cycles and go to the bake settings in the render properties and enable selected to active. Increase the max ray distance and change the bake mode to diffuse. We only need the color channel and no direct or indirect. Once this is all ready, press bake and let it process. If it worked, you'll get the texture correctly projected onto our low poly mesh. Save the new image texture to your desired location and hide the high poly object as we don't need it anymore. Go back into edit mode and use Alt S again to scale the mesh back down. Now the only thing left to do is to improve the shader. What I like to do with photo scans is to bring down the specularity a bit. 
I'm also going to use the image texture with a bump map to add surface details and the color ramp to drive the roughness. The scan is now finally finished and I'm really happy with the outcome. If you want my 3D model, you can download it for free with the link in the description below. I hope you could follow along with me and learned a few new things. If there are any open questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to help you. Again, this video is sponsored by Rendero. I honestly think their service is a valuable tool to improve the photogrammetry process. Their powerful setups make it a lot faster than if I would calculate everything on my own PC. And the best thing about it is that I can let it process on the cloud while working on other projects on my local computer. You have the option to get a free trial with $10 of credit to test it out if you are interested. More info can be found on rendero.com. I am Nick from Blender Daily, see you in the next one.